20 slides, that's it, 20 seconds a slide, and it's going to move automatically, so no control. That's part of the fun of it. Uh, Larry Speck has gained considerable national and international recognition for his work as an architect. He's an architecture critic, an academic, and a teacher. His professional work includes such Texas landmarks as Austin Bergstrom International Airport, the Austin Convention Center, and uh, Architecture for Discovery Green, an extraordinary project in, um, opened in the last several years in, in downtown uh, Houston. Uh, over the last 25 years, it's just extraordinary number of awards. He's been published everywhere you can be published, including The Atlantic, uh, New York Times, Texas Monthly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, virtually all the architecture magazines. I think he's won every teaching award that can be won at the University of Texas. Uh, he served at the, as a dean at the University of Texas. And I, are you the incoming president of the Texas Society of Architects? And somehow or other, he finds time to be the design principal of Page Southern on Page. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. But, uh, <laughs> but that's what he does. Okay. Are you ready to go? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I think we're pretty good as architects about talking about what architecture is. And, and I'm interested in that. But we're not very good about talking about what architecture does. And I'm so uh, frustrated that we don't convey to the world the importance, the phenomenal importance of what we do. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the Young Museum by Herzog and Demerol. The first time I went to see it, of course, I was interested in what it is. I, I looked at its beautiful copper skin and that twisty geometry of that thing rising up above the long, low lines of it. I loved what it is. But the second time I went, I focused on what it does. You know, it's an art museum. And in this museum, art resonates. Every room seems to be attuned to what's in that room, from early American art and furniture to contemporary art. And then recently, I went to see a friend's performance art piece there that just happened to be at the De Young, and, and it was taking off from the De Young. The artist was saying, I'm inspired by this place. I'm making my art because I'm generated by something in these spaces. This is an art museum. It's housing art. It's helping me see art, appreciate art. It's generating art. This is what it does. This is the power of architecture, not just to be a big dumb thing, but to do something. And in our own work, it's, it's been at this long enough now, I, I can kind of see what architecture does over time. So there's this house we did 20 years ago. The first owner of this house lived in it, and these kids grew up, and, and it, was, it did what we planned it to do. And then this woman bought it who was totally into yoga. And in this room, she did yoga, and she said it was the best space for yoga ever. So she began to invite her friends in to do yoga, and then she started teaching yoga in the room. And she swore it was just the best place in the world to do yoga. It made her yoga better. And then it got sold to Douglas Brinkley, who's this famous author, and he writes in this room. And Douglas Brinkley tells me he writes better in this room than anywhere he's ever written. And that his books are better because of this room. This is what architecture does. Now, it, it doesn't just do it on this kind of social, psychological, behavioral level, but it also does it technically. Oh my god, you can't see this slide, but this is Abiquiu in northern New Mexico, and there are lines of beautiful colored soil in Abiquiu. And we were doing a, a house in northern New Mexico, and we were inspired by the layers of beautiful colored soil. And we made these rammed earth walls that are out of different colors of soil. And it is beautiful, but it also does something very technical. It's a high thermal mass building, and it performs extremely well in this particular climate. So 
but we have this very scientific gauge that records exactly at the bottom, there are two little lines, has the heating been on, has the cooling been on, the green line there is what the temperature was from noon to noon on that particular day, and the white line is what the temperature was inside the house. This is the average, you can get it for each room in the house, or the average. So the temperature over a week went as high as 80 degrees, it went as low as 45 degrees, but you see that white line stayed freaking right at 72 <laughs> degrees. This is what this building does, and we need to talk about what architecture does. This is an original photograph we had taken when the airport was open. You can see that music stage, you can see all the design elements, but I hate that photograph because it's about what that building is. On the right, this is what the airport does. It makes a better place for people to catch their airplane and to find their way around and to get some food and to see their neighbors and to chit chat and talk and all the things airports do. This is a medical center we did for the Chickasaw Nation, Native Americans, disadvantaged population in Oklahoma. We took all of the bits of their culture, their, their handicraft work, we studied it, we looked at it, we talked with them, with their tribal elders about their weaving and their basket making and, and the patterns and, and the things that were in that. And we tried to make a building that was of their culture and that they could be proud of and that engendered a pride in this disadvantaged culture and made them feel, damn, we're important, we're good, and, and became an emblem because this is the biggest building they're ever going to build as a Chickasaw Nation. And we put it on a site that is 240 acres of beautiful landscape because there are people that value the land and the building really integrates with the land. And they love this building. We've never had a building that was embraced so thoroughly by the people who use it. Not only that, but they think it heals people. That all those views to nature make them feel better and they need less pain medication because of it. And when you're lying as a horizontal person, you even can see out these high windows so that you're connected to nature even if you're flat on your back and you're so sick you can't even sit up. What we do also has economic power. That Discovery Green, this, this park in downtown Houston, has been huge for economic development on that end of Houston. The east side of downtown never, never developed, even though they put big public investments in there. But the park made a fabric that then made a high-rise building for residential shoot-up, a high-rise building for office shoot-up, a new hotel in the works right now. It creates economic development if it's done right. But it also brings people together in that park. Rich people, poor people, young people, old people. I love going there and just seeing, so rare in our culture, this intermingling of different people. I'm interested in what architecture is, but I'm way more interested in the power of architecture to do something and to make a difference in the world. Thank you.